Good morning, rabbit lovers. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today, I'm going to formally and officially and completely introduce you to all of the new rabbits we have recently acquired. You all may remember that we've gotten rabbits in two separate groups. We got four from one homesteader and then six from another one. They are currently quarantining, and once they're done quarantining, we'll put them in our colony. But the four little girls we got from the first person are in this hutch, and then the six other rabbits we got are in these two tractors. Okay, I guess let's start with the hutch girls. So in this hutch, we have three rabbits. Lavender, Edelweiss, Jezalea, or Leah for short, and Islinzadi, or Isali for short. Lavender is a blue rabbit. She's, I think, five weeks old because she was four weeks old when we got her, and it's been a week since we've got her. So yeah, she would be five weeks old. And then Edelweiss is her full sister. They share both the same dad and the same mom. And it's difficult to tell her color because she has so much white on her that's covering her true color. I'm not sure if she's a broken or a harlequin or a broken harlequin. I guess she could be like a broken harlequin magpie or I don't really know. She looks very similar to her dad, except for that she just has a whole bunch more white. The only patches that aren't white are a little bit on her ear and a little like circles around her eyes, kind of like mascara. And from what I can tell, she's a broken blue or like a blue harlequin magpie. I guess she could be like a lilac because her eyes are like a pretty gray bluey. So that means her color is diluted of either black or brown. Brown or black rabbits will have brown eyes, but then blue or lilac rabbits will have like gray, bluey, purpley eyes. So I guess we'll have to breed her and see what colors of kits she has to be sure what her coloring is. But I'm assuming for right now she's a broken blue or something like that. And I guess you would consider her a Charlie because she has less than 10% color as well. So she's a Charlie something. And like her sister, she is, I guess, five weeks old now. Then we come to the older two full sisters. All four of these kits have the same dad, but just like Lavender and Edelweiss share one mom, Leah and Isali share another mom. So we have two groups of half-sisters. This is something super fun I learned when we got there. Isali and Leah's mom is actually one of Rosie and Basil's kits, who I sold to these people a long time ago, like several years ago. Jezalea's color is pretty self-evident. She's just a broken blue. And then Isali is a little more difficult. She is obviously a tricolor kit. As soon as I saw her, I was just smitten. You guys know I've wanted tricolor rabbits for a long time, and we had one, but then it died. So when I found out she was a girl, I was super excited, and I just had to have her. I can't really tell if she's like a broken harlequin or if she's a broken tort. I guess it could be either, but I'm leaning more towards Harlequin because her dad's a Harlequin and a whole bunch of her siblings were Harlequins and her mom is broken and there weren't any other torts in her litter, so it makes more sense that she would be a broken Harlequin. From what I could tell, her dad was a chocolate magpie Harlequin something. He was mostly white, but he had a tiny bits of like chocolate on him. So I guess his daughter Isali could be a tricolor rabbit with chocolate on her, or I guess it could be black. So I'm not really entirely sure if she is a black Japanese harlequin that's also broken, or a chocolate Japanese harlequin that's also broken. She has so few black markings on her, or chocolate, or just dark color markings on her, that it's hard to tell. But from what I can tell, I am more leaning towards black than chocolate, but I could be wrong. Again, we'll have to breed her and see what color babies she has, but I'm probably guessing black. And then the two sisters, Leah and Isali, are nine weeks old. They were eight weeks old when we got them, and that was one week ago, so they're now nine weeks. And all four of these girls are getting along very well in their hutch, even though they had not ever like met each other before and had lived in separate cages from each other until we put them together. They got along just fine, and they are continuing to get along just fine. They're eating and drinking well. Their poops are pretty normal. The younger two pair of sisters, when we brought them home, they were weaned from their mother. The older two pair was already weaned when we bought them, but...
but the act of buying the younger two pair was weeding them. So uh, obviously you're a bit worried when you do that just because it's such a shock, like in addition to the regular shock of be leaving your home and your family and all that stuff and adjusting to a new place. But so far all of them have been doing amazing. I'm seeing no sign of sickness or anything like that. But I will still pretend that they are sick and quarantine them and make sure I use special hands to touch them and don't spread any potential germs just in case. I guess it's only three more weeks until they get to finally be unquarantined and slowly integrated into the colony if they're big enough by that point. So these rabbits' parents were really fun to meet. You guys already know about the one kit who used to be mine who I sold to these people. Then the dad of these rabbits, the people got from the same breeder who I bought Rosie and Basil and later Sayla and Rinna from. So it's possible that he is somehow related to one or multiple or maybe all of those rabbits, though that's pretty unlikely. If I had to guess one who he was related to, I would guess Sayla because she's also a Harlequin and he's a Harlequin. And then Lavender and Edelweiss's mama was a kit that they kept as a breeder a few years back and they are not entirely sure of who her parents were. So it's possible that she is related to the dad or the other mama. So it was really fun to find some extended family from our rabbits. You guys know that one of the reasons I was hoping to get more breeder rabbits was to get some fresh blood and some new stock so I didn't have to keep inbreeding my rabbits. So you guys might be wondering why I got rabbits who are related to my rabbits. And the answer is that most of my rabbits aren't related to them at all. It's only Ivy and Acrobat who are very partially related to these does. So the bucks they will breed with aren't related to them at all. And it was actually kind of nice to get rabbits from breeders and from rabbits who I knew like the history and the stock and the quality. Like I know Rosie and Basil were really good rabbits and I know the breeder who the, they got the dad from and she's a really good breeder. So I kind of am very confident that these does will also be really good because their ancestors are really good and I know their ancestors. I mean, getting random rabbits from random people that you don't know anything about them is fine. And I did that with the second group of rabbits, but it was kind of good to know that I have some really good possibilities of some really good rabbit breeding stock because I had personal experience with a lot of their ancestors. You guys might also be noticing that the hutch looks a little bit different. I removed the black plastic from one of the side front window things because it's been very warm and spring-like lately and I wanted to make sure they were not getting too hot and it's not really supposed to get very cold any time after this so even though I did save the plastic in case I need to re-staple it up there I think we're not going to need it anymore because hopefully winter is pretty much over and we continue to have spring-like temperatures throughout the spring. And I also decided to take their white tub Heidi House thing out of there temporarily, perhaps temporarily. When they first came here and were scared and wanted somewhere to hide, they used that a lot and I was really glad that I had that in there for them. But as they're becoming more confident and used to this area, they're not using it as much and as they're growing bigger, they're not like fitting in there as easily and it was taking up a lot of their space. And again, it was getting warmer so they didn't need it in there to, you know, stay a little extra warm or anything. So I took it out and they're still doing really good. I might put it back in if it gets colder again. Or maybe just put it in and see if they continue to use it. But now that they're being more confident, I would prefer to give them more room in their cage and not have a whole bunch of their space be taken up by a huge old hidey house that they don't really need anymore. Okay, now that that's all covered, let's move on to the other group of rabbits. Hopefully I don't overwhelm you too much with all this information. It is a lot. As I mentioned in the last video, I added an S box to this tractor and then I separated the six rabbits into two tractors. I chose to keep the three oldest rabbits all in one tractor and then put the three youngest rabbits all in the other tractor. We have a eight month old doe, a six month old doe, and a six month old buck all in this one tractor. So it's kind of like a mini colony with rabbits who are all of breeding age. And because both of the does are already possibly pregnant, if either of these does give birth while they're in quarantine, that will kind of throw a wrench in my plans of smoothly and quickly transitioning them to the colony when the time comes. But when I bought them, they were already possibly pregnant, and I'm really in desperate need of kits right now, so I decided that the little bit more difficult time of transitioning them would be worth the kits we would get. 
so I left them with a buck. So if they were not bred when we bought them, but then get bred by this buck sometime as they're in these tractors quarantining, I will not be really that sad, even though it'll be a little bit more difficult, and I might have to wait a little bit longer to put them in the main colony. Let's start out with Ladybug. This is Ladybug. She is eight months old. As you can see, she is a chestnut doe, but she has white on her nose. She has a tiny little like stripe of white on her forehead. It's really hard to see, but sometimes you can kind of see it. And then she also has some white on her paw. I think she's just the most darling little rabbit. She just looks so fun. And the other doe in this tractor, her name is Cattail. She is six months old. Then the buck in this tractor, his name is Onyx. He's also six months old. Then in the other tractor, we have Constance, who is four months old. Then Sterling, who is also four months old, and Asha, who is a little more than two months old. Okay, so now a little bit about these rabbits' ancestry. All of these rabbits share the same dad. Isn't he super pretty? And then there were multiple different core breeder does in their colony. They had a colony set up. They had a buck, and then like, I think four, maybe five, like core breeder does, and then a whole bunch of kits. So they all share the same dad. And then Ladybug and Asha are sisters. Their mom was the brown doe. Then Cattail and Onyx are full siblings. Their mother was the harlequin doe. And Constance and Sterling are full siblings. Their mom was the broken black doe. And you guys might be wondering, why did I get a whole bunch more rabbits who are like related to each other if my goal is unrelated rabbits? And yes, if I just had these rabbits as breeders, that'd be too inbred for me. But in addition to the other rabbits who are not related from my original colony, and then the other rabbits who are not related from the hutch, and once you mix them all together, they will all be unrelated enough to each other to make me feel very, very comfortable. But if we ever do use these bucks in the main colony, Onyx will be breeding with his full sister, Cattail, and Sterling will be breeding with his full sister, Constance. Well, I guess he'd only be in the colony one at a time, so. But out of, like, a whole bunch of does, breeding, like, one with his one sister, I'm not that worried about it. The worst that'll happen is they'll have, like, subpar kits, and I'll just eat them, and it'll be fine. Another thing you guys might be worrying about is I have multiple broken does and a broken buck who I'm going to be breeding together. And that means I'll get some Charlie kits, and sometimes Ch Charlies, there's problems with them. I have not really dug in and done a lot of research about that, and I'm not too worried about it. I know sometimes there can be problems, but then other times there's no problems. As you guys know, I don't really need four bucks. I only technically need two, but Ronwin is being culled because he's bad. And actually, I might have to cull Ivanhoe as well if it turns out that he doesn't breed his does. I will probably try cycling him through in the colony a few more times just to be sure that he doesn't do a good job before I cull him. But my hope is to eventually get a whole bunch of bucks and then be able to like have multiple choices so I can sift through the good ones and the mediocre ones and get some really good ones instead of just having to rely on mediocre ones, which that's what I'm having to do right now. And then, of course, once we have a whole bunch of babies, I'll be able to keep a whole bunch of baby bucks and raise them up and see how they're doing as well. So, my rabbit numbers have grown very much since buying all these new rabbits. When before, we just had like five. No, I guess we had six because we hadn't butchered Diantha yet. So, from when we had like six, now we have, I think we have 16. That is a lot of rabbits, guys. And they're all breeders, too. It's not just like we have a whole bunch of kits, you know? It's like breeder rabbits. That is a lot of rabbits. So that would be four bucks and 12 does. And yes, we have plenty of room in our colony for 12 does. By the time everyone is out of quarantine and we're putting all the rabbits in the colony, I think most of the rabbits will be old enough to be breeding. It's going to take a while because we have so many rabbits and we only have like a small little space to like transition them we'll, and we'll probably end up doing that in three batches but i guess maybe we could just do two batches i guess we'll just wait and see there's still a whole bunch of things that could go wrong we could have rabbits get sick or does give birth or a whole bunch of stuff that could throw a wrench in our plans so while i have some tentative plans of how it could work out nothing's really set in stone until it's like right before the time to do it so i'm deciding to stop or at least put a very big pause in my getting more rabbits we're going, I'm probably going to put all the rabbits in the colony and then 
let them all have babies and have a few litters. I'm expecting there to be problems. I'm expecting there to be bad mamas or rabbits who don't do well on our diet or aggressive ones. And then I'll give everyone a chance to like express those bad things and then we can call them out. We'll do the same thing for the bucks. We'll put the bucks in, see if they're good at breeding, see if they're good at like, you know, being gentlemen and not overbreeding the does or chasing them all the time. And then over time, I'll be able to find my perfect bucks and my perfect does. And then by that point, if I want to buy more rabbits to try and then weed out, then I will. Or maybe I'll just decide that I like these rabbits I have and then just inbreed those a whole bunch. We'll have to see like how many are bad, how many are good. You know, if we only have like a few good ones left after we cull a whole bunch versus having most of them do good and only a few be bad, of course that will play a big part in our decision. So for now, the plan is just to continue to feed and water them and slowly transition them from their old diet to our new diet. And I'm hoping to do a video more about that and be more detailed in how I'm doing that. After their diet is normalized and they've gone there one month, we might decide to quarantine them longer than a month but at least one month or like 30 days or whatever. Then we'll put them in the transition pen and we'll put them in the colony and, and then they'll just live in the colony until we either cull them because they're bad or until they are really good breeders and live a long full life and then die. But in addition to being excited for just like the rabbits themselves to like grow and progress and like have babies again, I'm also super excited to film this whole process and show you guys how we're doing all this stuff and bring hopefully some learning and some entertainment and a lot of learning from failure probably. So I hope you continue to join us through our journey of raising rabbits and get a chance to watch these new ones go from like their first day on the homestead all the way to their last day and watch and enjoy and learn from all the things that happened in between. Thanks for watching!